Hey guys, the purpose of this video is we want to show you how to do some sealing on ballast tanks if one were to get a crack in it. Uh, we found that occasionally with folks adding lots of extra weight on top of the ballast tank, sometimes one of those tanks will crack and getting a ballast tank out of the boat is rather difficult. So uh, we want to show you a couple different methods that will hopefully help you out with that and uh, we'll talk about two or three different ways and give you a couple options. The first uh, option that we would give you is utilizing 3M5200. And what we're going to do is bring you in and show you a good close up of a tank and we'll show you. Okay, so our first alternative here is using a 3M5200 adhesive. Uh, and as hopefully you can see in the video right here, we have a crack at a seam in the ballast tank. So if we're going to use a, a 5200 solution to fix this, the first thing we want to do is to make sure we get a good sealant. We want to open that crack up. Uh, so you can either come by and grind a small portion of that out, open it up a little bit, then take your screwdriver, push down in the tank, and literally pull that guy back where you can see the edges, okay? And the goal there is so that we shoot 5200 and get a good mating surface inside the crack as well as on the outside. So you'd want to open that up, shoot your 5200 in there, then gently close this back up, remove your screwdriver, fill that hole with 5200, uh, and then the last thing we want to do is put a small bead on top of it and go from beyond the crack about a quarter of an inch on each side and then use a scraper and we'll just scrape that material away and try and smooth it out. Now make sure we don't take the material out of that gap, okay? Make sure that we're just smoothing it out and leaving just a very slight ridge right there. Now in using the 5200 method, make sure that you look at the directions on your 3M5200 make sure that you are giving it the proper cure time that is going to be key uh, if it tells you that it needs a 24-hour window to dry I would tell you go ahead and give it 36 before you get it wet so that's method number one uh, we'll set up here and show you method number two all right so the next couple of methods we want to show you guys is uh, one is a product called EM89 uh, EM89 is made by a company called engineered materials uh, it's supposed to be a plastics bond material. We could use the same process as we used on the 5200, but uh, Moeller Marine, the folks who build the tanks, recommend we take a piece of what's called virgin HDPE, okay? Uh, and HDPE is basically uh, high-density polyethylene. And virgin material means it's, that it's been only been poured one time. So, uh, in this process, the recommendation would be to do the same thing we've done with the 3M5200, but you'd want to cut a square and put it over top of the crack as well and put the adhesive on the back of it and smear it down and put a small weight on it and let it sit. Now, I'll tell you, that's not my favorite method. My favorite method would be using this system. And this is a plastic weld system. And this particular one, uh, it's very much like a soldering iron, okay? And we're going to show you guys how to use that in just a second. All right, guys, so the last option that we would have for you is there's a company called Drader Equipment. Uh, you can pull them up online. They uh, build a soldering iron gun, or excuse me, a welding gun. Uh, it's pretty nifty. They've got a lot of videos on how to use the tool. Uh, a little more expensive. Uh, you'll find that this is a, a more inexpensive way of making a plastic weld process. Uh, this is a plastics mini welder. It looks very much like a soldering iron, but it has a different tip and different wattage to heat that plastic. So hopefully this tip will help you guys out in solving some of those ballast tank uh, holes or cracks that you need. Okay, so in the plastic weld process, guys, uh, basically what we're doing is we're melting the plastic back together. Uh, in this particular tank, it's the same material that a ballast tank's made out of. Uh, we've got a crack in our seam, as you can see right there. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is to take our plastic welder, which basically is like a very hot soldering iron, okay, and we're going to open up and basically make a trough or a valley in the tank itself. So what we want to do is come in very gently and just start melting that guy and opening up a trough. We don't want to burn all the way through it, okay. We just want to basically make the trough that we can put some more material in. And we want to make sure we go past the crack itself as we're opening this guy up. Okay. And just take your time with it. All right. So 
we've opened it up we're gonna let it sit there then we're going to use uh, more plastic material now in the kit that we just showed you uh, I have these HDPE rods the other thing that you can do uh, is use an old tank if you have a, a tank laying around that you've taken out of a boat previously that tank will work if you'll cut it into strips the key is to cut it down very fine uh, between an eighth and a quarter inch strips and length doesn't really matter uh, and we're going to use that as our filler material to put back in so in this case we're going to use clear and we're going to start filling this guy back in okay now one of the things that I probably forgot to tell you guys is you need to clean the tank and make sure the tanks good and clean uh, no dirt no debris it has to be completely dry and we're just gonna fill this guy in real slow and melt it down and push that material right into that valley that we made Once we get some material in there, then we can come back and start smoothing it out. Another tip for you is time of year that you do this uh, can play a factor of how well you get it to work. What I mean is if you're doing this repair in the middle of the winter, you might want to get a uh, heat gun and heat the tank and also heat your filler material like this rod okay? Uh, because the warmer it is the better it's going to sit in there uh, we're lucky enough today that it's about 85 to 90 degrees outside so we really don't have to worry about warming it up any and we're just going to lay another layer right on top of this guy And the thought process of plastic welding is very, very similar to the process of metal welding. You're liquefying material, filling in the gap. Okay. The bright side to plastic welding is that we can come back and sand that rough area. We can let that dry good. Uh, and we'll do that here in just a second. We're going to let this guy dry and we can take a razor knife and come back and just gently trim any high spots we've got. There we go. We don't want to gouge it out, we just want to knock the high stuff off. In most of the ballast tanks, in many cases, you're going to find that it's carpet covered anyway, so you've had to peel the carpet back to do this. And of course, you'd want to clean off any glue, and now you can just lay your carpet right back over it and, and make sure that uh, it's sealed, obviously, before you lay the carpet over it, but you can just glue the carpet right back down and you're all done. 